Hi there and welcome to another video. This is Jennifer McGuire and today I'm sharing some tips on stepping up your inking. And in this case, I'm showing it on using stencils and die cuts. This is all about mixing your inks so that you can add more interest, more color, and really just have more fun with the products that you have. And the best part is you can do this with pretty much any inks or inking tools that you may have. Before we get started, I wanted to mention that this video is part of a small video hop for Altenew. And so be sure to check out the list of other channels below and how to win a big giveaway. All right, so the ink that I am choosing to use today is Altenew Fresh Dye Ink. I really like this ink for many reasons, and I will link to a really complete video on them up here on the top right if you want to learn more. I really like the form of the circle ink pad so that you can hold it in your hand nicely. The lid turns on and clicks in place so it won't fall off. You can stack them easily. It is a firm pad with dye ink, but this is one of the best dye inks I've ever stamped with. It really stamps beautifully and it also blends beautifully. So again, check out that video if you want more information. I wanted to show you the colors that are available. I just redid all of the ink swatches for this ink line. These are the colors so far. Now the top row and the third row are the newest colors and I'll be using some of those today. They are absolutely beautiful. Two of the color families I use the most, like a peach and kind of a turquoise or teal color, but they fit in nicely with the other colors that have already been released. Again, more of these colors are coming out. This is just the start of the collection. The fresh dye inks are available in full size pads, ink cubes, and there are reinkers. All right, so these are the inks I'm using today, again, because they just really are beautiful colors and they blend nicely, but use whatever inks you have. You really can do this technique with many different inks. Along with these inks, I'll be using the new Alta New Build a Garden Rock Trumpet set. This is a little bundle that is just really unique. It's huge, you can see that's a large stamp set. That's an A2 card panel, just so you can get an idea of how large that image is. I like that this can be used on any size card, including five by seven, and it'll fill it up really nicely. I'll actually do, create one of those floral images and use it on two cards. So along with the large stamp set, you get this little booklet that gives you instructions on using the layering stencils that are also part of this bundle. The bundle also includes a mini ink blending brush, which you'll see me use in a bit. And it does have an add-on die set available. I'm not using the add-on die set today, just using the layering stencils and stamp set, but do know that is an option. And by the way, this is part of a subscription program. However, you can buy it individually. You can buy this set individually. Okay, so I have my Misty stamping tool and this large image along with a piece of large white cardstock. I will stamp this with Altenew Black Obsidian ink, which is a qu quicker drying pigment ink. But what's nice about this ink is it stamps very dark and very crisp. I use it a lot in videos, but you can also, if you want, uh, clear heat emboss it. So I use my anti-static powder tool. I'll stamp with the Altenew Obsidian Pigment Ink. Then I will quickly add clear embossing powder to it and heat set it. You don't have to heat emboss with this ink. It'll definitely dry on its own. That's what I usually do. I just thought a bit of embossing was fun today. Now there is that coordinating dye available to go with it. Again, everything's sold together except the dye. I chose not to use the dye, but do know it is an option. All right, let's use those layering stencils. Now this is stencil number one. I am not showing you yet, but soon on the later stencils, I'll share with you some tips that I like to do, some things I like to do that set me up for success when using layering stencils. So stay tuned with me here. This is the first stencil. I did write with a Sharpie up in the top corner, one with a circle around it, just so I could better see the stencil number. It is engraved on the stencil, but sometimes that's hard to see when you're creating. Also, the bottom right corner of this has an etched line that blocks off or marks off the bottom right corner that is meant for a different step in the layering stencil. They just try to put everything on one stencil to save the cost. So you'll see me move to that bottom right corner in a moment. 
So right now I am applying the blush ink from Altenew Fresh Dye Ink Collection. I'll put the colors in the corner so you can play along if you want to. And I'm using that mini blending brush that comes with this, uh, st this stencil and stamp bundle. I am applying a heavy amount of this lighter ink towards the base of this flower. Now this is the first layering stencil. It has the most uh, openings, the biggest openings. That means I use the lightest ink. But also the layering guide that comes with it tells you to do that. Now I only applied the blush towards the middle and base of those openings. Now I'm coming in with Altenew Crisp Dye Ink. This is an older ink line, but still works wonderfully and works well with the fresh dye inks. And I'm applying that pink ink on the areas that we left uninked, so the tips of these flowers. If you wanted to have a really nice highlight, you could leave those tips white and it would give beautiful contrast. But I wanted to do kind of a blend between that pink and peach color. You can definitely do blends between different colors that are a little more um, have a little more contrast between them but I really thought that this peach and pink would be beautiful for these flowers. Now I am going to do that same thing throughout this whole stenciling where I do two colors over one stencil blending them between so I'll share tips on how to get that blend as we go. So there is that etch line on the stencil, which means this bottom part below that etch line is done separately. So now I'm lining that up with these little flower pieces on the bottom. Again, the guide is very, very helpful to figure this out. But I also find that a lot of times I can just figure it out by moving it around and looking at the shapes. This time I had my pink ink out, so I thought I'd start with that. I'm putting that pink ink along the outer edge and then that blush color towards the middle. The key to blending, I'll always say this, is to overlap your colors. The more you overlap, the better the blend you'll get. And I am making sure that I overlap quite a bit here. All right, now this is stencil number two. I thought I'd show, this is a tip I like to do. I write the number of the stencil with the, uh, with the black Sharpie because sometimes it's hard to see that etching as you create. But then I put a piece of scotch tape over it, clear tape because as you see me doing here, I clean my stencils with a spray of rubbing alcohol and a dry cloth. If I don't put tape over the Sharpie, as I'm doing here, I might rub that away when I use the rubbing alcohol to clean it. So one tip is to mark your stencils with a Sharpie and put a piece of tape over it. Just easier to see as you go. I also do this on the etch lines. Now I didn't do this, this is stencil one, I didn't do this before because I completely forgot about it. But I'm going back and doing it now so that when I use this stencil set again, it'll be ready to go. I do a black Sharpie and then tape over it so that that Sharpie doesn't rub off. Now I will do that process more as we go so you'll see more about that. Now this stencil number two is just one big stencil. There aren't two parts to it so I can easily line it up and with this second stencil I'll use slightly darker inks. I like that Altenew has a light, medium, dark, and extra dark in their little color families. They have that with their older crisp dye inks and also with these new fresh dye inks. So it's really easy to figure out what inks you should use for a lighter look or darker look. So this is the second color in this family. So it's the second darkest. It's still a pretty light color. I am putting it down heavy handed just so I can get more color from it and easily blend with this fuchsia color. If you do not have a lot of inks where you have light, medium, and dark, you can use the same ink pad and just go really light-handed over the first stencil, medium-handed over the second, and heavy-handed over the third, and you'll get that same look. But I have these little color families, so I'm putting them to use. Notice I am not spending a lot of time drying there, or, or blending. There's absolutely no reason to do so. If you're overlapping your inks a little bit where they meet up, you can be sure that you'll get a good blend. If you're not happy with your inking, don't worry. All of these inks will dry into the paper and blend and give beautiful results. So I encourage you when you're using layering stencils, especially floral ones like this, not don't spend a lot of time on your blending. It will really do the work for you. All right, so this is stencil number three. I'm writing that on the stencil. I am tracing along those etched lines with my black Sharpie and putting tape over it. 
I now am remembering to do this and I'm doing it before I use the stencils. Then when I'm done, all of these stencils will be set up for the next time I use them. Okay, so now I'm using only above that etched line and I'm following the instructions. You can see how easy it is to figure out there. So I know exactly where to go. I also like that Altenew made these stencils so you don't have to rotate them much to figure out how they line up. If you start with that top left corner of the stencil at the top left corner of your project, you just move up and over or down and over a little bit to find how it lines up. No rotating or flipping or anything like that. All right, so this is the third stencil. So I'm coming in with my darkest colors for that peach and pink color. Look how beautiful that is. So I did that one flower with the uh, stencil openings above that etch line. Now I'm using the openings below the etch line and that lines up with some of the other flower images. Again, the reason Altenew puts these two sets on one stencil, these two steps of stenciling, is to save cost. They could have done just a bunch of giant stencils, but there would have been a lot of solid places unused on the stencil. So this helps to keep the cost down. Okay, so here I'm applying a heavy amount of that crimson color and, and then also some of the magenta on the tips. And look at that beautiful blend that we get from that peach to the pink. So I could have just done one color over this, but we're really stepping it up by mixing our inks. Okay, so now for stencil number five, this one you just rotate a tiny bit, it lines up easily. And over this, we'll do our greens. So the next three stencils are green inks. And so I'm using the greens from the uh, Fresh Ink collection, the round ink pad. This is kind of a bluer ink, like a sagey kind of ink. I'm doing that towards the base of the leaves. Notice, not doing excellent blending here, just putting color down. You will see some lines from the brushes here. It doesn't matter. It'll all look beautiful in the end, I promise. So then on the tips of these leaves, I'm using a much brighter limey green. I thought that blend would be really nice. So it's fun to mix different greens on leaves, different colors of greens, or you can even mix green with yellow or green with blue, which you'll see me do later. I really like that pop of lime green on the tip of these leaves. All right, so now we're on to stencil number five, and I'm gonna share with you another option that you can do when you have stencils like this, where there are two parts to it, with that etched line between it. You can do this where I'm putting tape over the Sharpie line, but another thing you can do is cut your stencils. Now, I know this is going to overwhelm some people. I totally get that. You do not have to do this option, but I find it really helpful. I just cut my stencil apart near that etch line because these are really two different stencils combined in one or two different layers, so I might as well just cut them apart. I will write the same number on the top corner of both of the pieces so I can easily find it in my guide. And now it's much easier for me to figure out. So now I have this one stencil here and I can see it lines up with these open leaves here. Again, you can look at the guide. I do make sure I put some tape around the areas where I may go over the stencil edge. If you are really concerned about going over the stencil edge, use as much tape as you need. You can reuse those pieces over and over. So next I'm going down with the same color families but a heavier amount. So that bluish green towards the base and that limey green towards the tips of the leaves. I really think it makes a big difference to do this mix of colors over these layering stencils. The final result will be beautiful. And again, I can cut this up to make two cards. Now I have the other part of stencil number five. I'll line it up as according to the instructions, pretty easy to figure out, and I'll apply the same colors of ink. So these are some medium colors of the greens. Once again, I will remind you, you can just do one color over this to save time. I'm just showing you an idea of stepping up your inking by mixing different colors. And by the way, I'm sorry I have the video sped up. I just wanted to make sure I could show a lot of examples today. And that was the, really the best way to make sure this video wasn't really, really long. Okay, so now I'm on to the next stencil part. This time I decided not to cut it apart simply because I know most people won't want to do that. So on this one, I have the etch line traced in and the tape over it. But keep in mind, cutting your stencils is always okay, these layering stencils. 
it's something that I like to do. I just don't show often because I know people uh, usually don't want to cut up their products. But really, I feel like if it helps to make your stencils easier to use, uh, you definitely, there's no reason not to. Okay, so now for that middle section of the stencil, so between the two etched lines, this time I'm going in with the darkest of my colors. So this forest fern is a beautiful, like, uh, it's a green with a bit of a blue tint to it, just gorgeous, and then the parrot for that lime color. And by the way, if you have a layering stencil set and you're unsure which layers to do lighter inks and which layers to do darker, always check the packaging or the manufacturer's website because it's guaranteed they'll have instructions and suggestions for you. So look at that beautiful final result. Absolutely gorgeous. All I did was stamp and then follow along with the layering stencils. Gives great results every time. If you are someone like me who kind of struggles with coloring, where, where to do the lighter areas and the darker areas and much more, layering stencils that color in stamped images are really helpful. So at this point, I'm trying to figure out how I want to cut this up. I really want to get a nice rectangle there in that one corner and then have a diagonal border that I can use on a separate card. Now, you definitely could use a die to trim out the area you want. I ended up thinking I was going to use a die, but then ended up using my trimmer to uh, just trim this down to be a smaller size. All right, so let's get started with that smaller rectangle and turn that into a card. I thought it'd be fun to have a super, super thin black mat on this. So I'm adhering it to the corner of a piece of black cardstock, and then I'll trim the other two sides. So this is a super thin mat. I chose for that thin mat because I wanted to mimic the thin lines that this stamp offers. Really beautiful detail. Okay, so uh, next I have my scoreboard and it's a piece of white cardstock that is five and a half inches tall by eight and a half inches wide. And I'm scoring it right down the middle at four and a quarter inches. On one side of that score line, I'm using this debossing cover plate. It does not cut anything, it just does a pierced pattern. And I run that through my die cut machine as I would a normal die. Again, this just creates a fun texture on the cardstock. It doesn't do any cutting. So after I've used this on one half of our cardstock piece, I'll move it over to the other side of the score line and do the same thing with that half. Now notice I'll have my cutting plate right up against the edge of that die over there on the right. That way I don't kind of squeeze and flatten the part of the cardstock that we've already added the piercing to. So that part where it's already pierced is kind of hanging out so it doesn't get flattened. So now I have this fun piercing pattern on both sides of the cardstock. This would be a great background for like a five by seven or slimline card but I'm going to fold this in half. So I'm reinforcing that score line we put in there before at four and a quarter inches. And on one side of the cardstock, I'm doing a score line at two and an eighth of an inch. I will then fold on the first score line in on itself so the nice sides of the cardstock meet together there in the center. Then I will fold back along that second score line and we have a fun Z fold card. And over the entire thing, we have that piercing pattern. For a sentiment, I'm using the Alta New Sweet Bouquet Stamp Bundle. I've used this many times in videos before. I have stamped Hello Friend on white cardstock with black ink and used the coordinating die to cut it out. Here's a look at the stencils that come with the stamp set. I really like that it has a lot jam-packed into it, but I'm only using the sentiment today. I did die cut two additional white die cuts to glue behind our sentiment so it has some stacked dimension just to make it stand out nicely. And I'll glue that right onto our panel, kind of fitting there in the bottom right corner. Now it's time to add our panel to the front of the Z fold card. So I am putting strong liquid adhesive only on the back left of this panel. Notice I'm putting quite a bit of glue down, but not a thick amount. So it's in a lot of it area, but it's not a lot of adhesive. Does that make sense? Like it's a thin line of adhesive covering a lot of the areas. I don't want any of it to ooze out, but I do want it to hold onto that pierced textured card. So I glued that to the front flap and then I cut another piece of white and black cardstock of the same size and I'm gluing that to the inside. And I did stamp a little greeting at the top center of that from the same stamp set that I got the floral images from. 
Now to add a little bit of interest to the front, I decided to add some white uh, enamel dots from Altenew. They have lots of color packs, but I really like this black and white set. I thought bling would be a little too much for uh, this card. I wanted that color to stand out. So the white enamel dots were the perfect touch. I wanted a pop of that peach and pink color on the inside of the card, so I die cut a heart from a piece of scrap cardstock, and I'll use the negative space of that heart as a stencil. So I'm taking the heart die cut, lining it up over my sentiment. Then I'll line up the negative space around that. This is just helping to me to get that position just right. I'll then remove that heart die cut, leave the negative space there, and ink over it as if it was a stencil. I will use the same kind of peach and pink colors that I used on the front, and this will draw attention to this little sentiment and add that little pop of color on the inside. And then finally, I use my Tonic Aqua Shimmer Pen to add a little bit of sparkle to the flowers. I really put most of the sparkle on the darkest areas of the inking, but then I just put it in little nooks and crannies here or there. It's gorgeous in real life how much shine that adds, but I didn't color the entire flower. So here's the completed card. It stands nicely on display and has that fun opening. You can see closely here that beautiful coloring that we got. I did not take much time to blend. Instead, I just put the color down and let the ink do the work for me. I did step up these stencils though by doing two shades of color, two different colors over each stencil. So we have the peach and the pink and the two different colors of green. And it's an excellent way to kind of step up your stenciling and allow you to get really dynamic results. After you do the stenciling, there wasn't much left to do. Now I had that leftover border piece, so I made this simple card. I glued it onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. And then I glued a sentiment strip right along the edge of it. That's black cardstock with a white heat embossed sentiment. And I just think this is a great way to use that leftover piece. In fact, I like this design so much that I think I'll do a few more in different colors and do a set of note cards as a teacher gift. Okay, now let's explore stepping up our inking by mixing colors on die cuts. I'll be using a layering die set, but you could definitely do this on a single die cut if you prefer. This is the new beautiful Altenew Fragrant Peony. Now I know peonies aren't usually teal and blue, but hey, it's our own made up garden, so we can do whatever we want. Now these layering dies are very easy to follow thanks to this little keyhole system that they have. See that keyhole shape that's cut at the center of the flowers and the number that's engraved on it? That shows you what order to layer them and what positioning. I'll demonstrate it in a moment, but this is a game changer for layering dies. Now to add ink to my white die cuts that I cut with these dies, I am using my Altenew Sticky Matte Grid. This is the grid that comes in the stamp wheel. However, you can buy this grid by itself. It is made of a material like clear stamps are made, so it has a little bit of stick to it and it's great for holding your die cuts in place as you ink them. Great for stenciling too, I'll show you later in this video. So you can buy this mat separate from the stamp wheel. Here I am using one of those mini ink blending tools to apply uh, this bluish ink towards the center of these die cuts. Now I'll add a second color on the tips, but if you wanted to, you could leave it like this and have that white highlight on the edge. I start at the center of the die cut and just go in circles both ways, working my way out towards the tip to apply that ink. Again, I'm not spending a ton of time. I just want to get that ink down. We're going to add the second color to the tips of these leaves. So I like to start off of the die cut, just put that ink in, on the blending brush onto that sticky mat, and then just drag the color on in that circular motion. You'll see this isn't even, right? This is pretty uneven inking. It's okay, it'll dry beautifully. I just want to get a good amount of this lighter ink down. By the way, that was layer number three of the flowers. I'm working my way backwards because that layer three, which is on top, I want it to be the lightest. And this way I'm working up to my darker layers behind it. So this is layer two. I've moved up to a slightly darker shade in the same families of blues and teals. And I will apply it in the same way. I'm putting that darker blue ink towards the center of the flower and then the teal on the tips. 
I just think it's fun to have these two colors together. It'll add a lot more interest to this flower when we're finished. If you wanted to, you could have started with a light blue cardstock, and then you wouldn't have to put as much ink on top. But I really like to use my white cardstock because usually it is less expensive, so this will save me a bit. All right, now this is the bottom layer. It's actually layer number one of the flowers, and I'm putting the ink on the heaviest here, the darkest color. So this is the darkest color in these color families. Now, as before, when you're blending two colors together, you want to make sure you overlap where the two colors meet. So notice that that darker bluish purple goes close to the tips of the flowers, just softer towards the tips. Then I come in and I put the dark teal on top of that. So the overlap will help with the blending. Now these will look like a hot mess at first, but as the ink dries and blends, it'll be beautiful. You'll see in a moment. Now for the leaves, I am just putting Aqualicious color down towards the base of those leaves. And I used a bigger blending brush this time to save time. Then I will come on top of this and apply a green ink, mostly towards the tip of the leaves, but I do overlap with all of the blue we just put down. And this will give us more of a Kelly green. So I was able to combine the green and the blue to create a new color of green. This overlapping and blending of inks is a great way to make more of the colors that you have. And again, you can do this with distress inks, oxide inks, dye inks, whatever you have on hand. Now for the flower centers, I'm applying an okra ink over that uh, to just to change the color to that yellow, put it on pretty heavy. Now these dyes make impressions too as they cut. And it made imp the dyes made an impression of dots on these little floral centers. So I am applying this dark brown color with a brayer. That way the dark brown only ends up on the raised areas and we're left with the yellow showing in the little indentations. So it looks like we have those little yellow dots. So again, these dyes make an impression. And so I'm only putting that dark brown ink on the raised areas. This is another way to step up your die cuts, any kind of die cuts that have impressions made on them. All right, now, by the way, to clean that sticky mat, I just use a wet washcloth and a dry cloth, and it's good to go again. Okay, so now it's time to layer our flowers. You can see the pieces dried beautifully, and layering them is very easy because of that keyhole shape. I just glue each of the layers together from one to three, lining up that keyhole shape in the center. Don't worry, the keyhole shape will be covered by the flower center die cut and no one will ever know. That layered peony set actually had pieces to create two different size layered peonies. So I inked those die cuts and I'm layering them together here too. And I did the same inking. Now these layering die cuts have a small arrow that's cut in the center. So I know how to layer them up and how to keep them separate from those die cuts that have the keyhole in the center. Brilliant system, makes it so easy to glue these together. Now for the center, it also has a layering uh, die cut that I just cut from white cardstock that allows you to position that keyhole just right in place and then you put your inked one on top of that. I love the results of these flowers, absolutely beautiful. And by using two different color inks together, I was able to step up the results. Since I made extra flowers and leaves, I have enough for two cards, maybe even three, but I'll do two today. It's time to do that foiling for the background that will put our flowers on. I'm using this amazing Altenew Here Comes the Sun hot foil plate. I love the style of this. I'm not using it as a sun, but rather as a background with a fun focal point. I have taped my plate onto a piece of smooth white cardstock and I'm sliding some pastel teal uh, foil underneath it. Make sure that the shiny or pretty side of the foil touches the pretty side of the plate. I'll put that upside down on my glimmer machine. This is a hot foil machine that you put your plate on and it warms it up. I press the timer button and it's running over there off to the side. While that is running, the timer doesn't take very long, I thought I would put a little bit of white ink on the edge of my flowers. This just gives like a highlighted tip to the petals. You could totally skip this, but I'm using a blending brush and white pigment ink. I only use that blending brush for white pigment ink, so it stays nice and clean. All right, so after those flowers are done and my timer's done on the glimmer machine, I'll take those plates out and run it through my Spellbinders Platinum machine. 
So the glimmer machine provides the heat, the die cut machine applies the pressure. If you have a different die cut machine, there are other foil machines out there that work in the same way. You need to check with your manufacturer. And look at that beautiful result. I love that pastel foil. Now I have this leftover negative piece of foil and I don't want it to go to waste. So I am going to use that for reverse foiling. You could in fact use the back of this hot foil plate for this technique. However, I have this solid hot foil plate from Pink Fresh Studio, so I'll go ahead and use that. I will put the hot, solid hot foil plate onto my cardstock, create a little hinge with some tape, put that leftover foil underneath it, and then flip that over and place it onto our warmed up glimmer machine. So this solid hot foil plate is definitely one that's great to have for foiling because it allows you to easily use that leftover foil. However, if you do have a big foil plate, you can often use the back of it. All right, so now after the timer went off, I'll run this through my die cut machine, and now we have a reverse foiled background. So I didn't let that negative space go to waste. We have two backgrounds now. One is the reverse of the other. Great way to really stretch your foiling. And now I have two backgrounds for my two cards. I trimmed those backgrounds down and glued them onto top folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch cards. Now I want my flowers and leaves to be able to hang off of my card, so I chose to use an A6 envelope. I've placed that envelope behind my card so I know how much room I have to allow those die cuts to hang off and still fit in the envelope. A6 envelopes are a little bit bigger than an A2 card. You could also use a five by seven envelope and that would give you even more room to hang off. So that blue that you see there is the envelope. I am just using liquid adhesive to place my die cuts onto the card. I put my flowers down first and now I'm tucking the leaves behind it. I like using liquid adhesive because it gives me that little bit of wiggle room to move things around to get good placement. You can always go back and lift any die cuts and squeeze a little bit more glue underneath if you really feel you need more, but really a little goes a long way. For a sentiment on this, I decided to use one of my favorites. I use this a lot. This is the Altenew Versatile Greeting die set. There is a foil plate available separately. I cut the hugs from black cardstock and the shadow from white glued those together and now I'm adding them on top of the flowers. Now I know some people don't like to put their sentiment right on top of their flowers because it covers up a lot, but I really like my sentiment to be in the focal point and these flowers are the focal point and that background, you can see how it kind of points to that focal point also. I did add a few white enamel dots from Altenew just for a little bit of added interest. You can see that beautiful blending we get. Notice my leaves, I didn't spend a lot of time doing blending. I could have spent more time, but I don't think you need to because those flowers are really, again, the focal point of it all. Here's a closer look at the reverse foiling. And again, I love how we were able to change up these flowers by mixing two colors together. It's a really easy way to step up your inks and make better use of the colors that you have. Okay, now my final example is definitely the simplest, and we are again doing ink blending over stencils, but then we'll add some stamping on top. In this case, you'll see how fast it can be to use multiple colors together over a stencil. This time I'm using the Dynamic Duo Luscious Flora set. Dynamic Duo is a stencils and a stamp set that go together. Again, you could join this as a subscription where you get it every month from Altenew, but this is sold separately, so you can get this without subscribing also. I really like the style of this. Now there are also beautiful sentiments in that little mini stamp set, but I'm just using the stencils and the main floral image today. Once again, I have my Altenew Sticky Mat Grid, which is again, like a giant stamp, and I will place my cardstock onto it. That will hold it in place as we use the stencils. This is my favorite way to use this mat. You can see how the stencil almost like suctions itself onto the sticky mat, holding it in place. You don't have to use your fingers to hold it. It will stay secure. Now I'll apply quickly a green ink over this. I'm using the jade color. When I want to apply one color over a stencil, I like to use this bigger blending brush from Altenew. It is definitely a time saver. This is also the brush that I like to use when I'm blending a background. 
After I've applied that green very quickly, I'm coming in with this blue color and putting it towards the base of all of these leaves using that smaller blending brush. By the way, whenever I apply ink over stencil, I like to wax on and wax off. So basically I like to go in circles in one direction and then circles in the other direction. That really makes sure that you get into the nooks and crannies of the stencil and get the shape really defined well. So I'm not spending much time blending here, just putting that blue ink at the base of the leaves. And look at how beautiful that is over one stencil. Now the second stencil I'll line up, very easy to line up. I'll press it on my sticky mat and it'll stay put there. And I am quickly applying this um, aqualicious color with a large blending brush. You'll see I have some spots where it's a little splotchy. It's okay. It'll dry and look beautiful in the end. Then I'm coming in with a darker color from the same family and applying that towards the base of these flowers. So this time I'm not mixing two different colors. I have the same color family. I'm just using a lighter and dark ink together. But look how much that really steps it up. Two stencils done very quickly. Now it's time to stamp that floral image on top of our stenciling repeatedly. So I have a sticky mat in my Misty stamping tool. I've placed my cardstock on it. And now I'm lining up the floral image with the stenciling that I've done. There is a guide with this set, but I found I didn't need it. It was easy to line up. I use my anti-static powder tool and now I'm stamping that flower image with Versamark ink. You could definitely do black here if you want it to stand out more. I wanted something subtle and we'll add some clear embossing powder here in a moment. I move the stamp to another area and I'll repeat the same thing. So I've stamped two of my flowers at once with the Versamark ink. Now we'll add clear sparkle embossing powder. I thought the sparkle would be really fun on this bold color, but again, if you want it to stand out more, I would use black ink or a darker ink. So now we have two of the flowers. You can see that sparkle. I just love that detail. And I'll continue to repeat that, moving the flower around, stamping with Versamark ink, and then heat embossing with that clear sparkle powder. And there we have our completed background. Didn't take long at all. I decided to trim off part of the top of this background panel so that I could have an open area up there for my sentiment. For the sentiment, I'll do a die cut and a stamp sentiment. For the die cut, I thought I'd use glitter cardstock Altenew has a bunch of different options for glitter cardstock. I'll use that dazzling diamond that you see in my hand there to the right, but do know they have lots of beautiful colors of glitter cardstock. This glitter doesn't rub off and it die cuts beautifully. I use that diamond that I have here in my hand quite often, and I also use this mix pack of metallics. There are a few different shades of gold and silver in here, a good basics pack. But that diamond that's sold by itself is definitely the one I reach for the most. It's kind of like a warm, light silver. So I die cut the Fancy Hello die from that diamond glitter cardstock. And I also white heat embossed a sentiment from the Tiny Sentiments Hello stamp set. I heat embossed that on a thin dark teal cardstock strip. And I'm gluing it right against the top to create a nice border. I thought it would be fun if my glitter hello die cut kind of hung off the top of the card. So I want to give it some strength so that little dainty part that's sticking off the top of the card doesn't get bent. So I glued two additional hello die cuts behind the glitter one. That gives me strength and dimension and I'll add that to my card. Because this sticks off the top, I will again use a bigger A6 envelope. I'll link to my favorite ones below. I wanted a few little accents along our background on the bottom of the card, and I wanted them to match that Hello die cut. So I used this Altenew Radial Circles background die and cut from a scrap of that diamond glitter cardstock. And that created a bunch of little dots, and I'm gluing those scattered along our stenciled and stamped background. I like that now these accents, which don't have much bulk to them, match our glitter die cut. So there you can see the A6 envelope. Our card will fit in it nicely. And we have that little bit sticking off the top, which I think is fun and different. There you can see all the sparkle, the sparkle of our heat embossing and the sparkle of our glitter cardstock. I really like this layering stencil stamp combo, and I was able to step it up by mixing different inks together. So today I showed you how to mix different inks together over stencils and on die cuts. I'll be sure to show how to do that with stamps in the near future. 
All right, if you're interested in any of these supplies, I have them linked below in my YouTube description. You can also go to my blog where you're able to bookmark videos and cards for future reference and much more. Again, this is part of a video hop, so check out the other videos below and the giveaway. I thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon with another video.